is orthogonal. So I am going to define one case. This is not orthogonal. This is also not orthogonal. But one element of this is orthogonal to n minus one elements of the previous cases. So I can define uh, that kind of a um, basis. Now what is the advantage? Advantage is now I can ask a question. So using this basis, we can write Vj to be inner product of Aj with V. I cannot write inner product of Vj with V, but I can write inner product of Aj with V. Because Aj with anything other than Vj will be due according to this construction. So what I cannot achieve with uh, one basis, if it is non-orthogonal, I can achieve by appropriately defining another non-orthogonal basis. I can achieve with these two bases. Okay. So this is the trick. I cannot uh, obtain the components with one basis, but I will define another basis appropriately with this. This is the only definition. How do I construct a new basis? Based on this. I can construct a new basis based on this requirement. I can extract this. So, this is um, <coughs> So, in general, we have the following uh, notation, the following nomenclature this vector v1, v2, etc., vn is called direct basis, non orthogonal basis, and then this vector, this basis a2, an is called the reciprocal basis. This is the same reciprocal basis we define in solid state physics. So reciprocal. Okay, so you can you can have a direct basis, you can have a reciprocal basis. Whenever you have a non-orthogonal system, you should have two bases, one direct basis and reciprocal basis. Then only you can extract the components of <coughs> see uh, just to make contact with what you know in solid state physics, let me consider 